Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And uh, again, the weather is absolutely weird uh, here in Southern California. It's already 82 plus degrees, and it's like the middle of the summer. It's not like even mild. We often have weather in the summer that's 76 to 85 as the average day. This is I'm hotter. I'm in Indiana in the great Midwest, and we're uh, in the uh, 40s right now. Uh, it's actually 41. I have seen just faintly a light dusting of snow really once. Uh, that didn't even cover everything, and it's almost February. Well, here's the scenario. I'm wargaming it out so we can we play multi-game chess here. Number one, the first move that Iran is doing is saying we're not going to fulfill contracts that they have. They say that they're going to allow the Italians and Greeks to have fulfillment of contracts with Iran until July 1. The Iranians are saying, hey, what? Guess what? We're not going to fulfill those contracts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, they're, it's, it, they've, got, they've taken it before the Iranian parliament right now. Right. So they're, they're, uh, the, the Trump card is almost down. Right. And, and that means they don't have to close the Strait of Hormuz. The next step after that is to actually have what I call a technical closure. Don't have to put any military. Just have radio control. Send a signal to the, uh, the, uh, the, the ships. You're taking your life in your hands because you're not allowed to be in the, in the Strait. They then radio back from the ship to their insurance carrier that goes to Lloyd's of London or whoever that insures them for international travel, and Lloyd's is one of the largest, and they'll just simply radio back to the captains through the company, we're not permitting you to go through there because you're in a war zone, and the Iranians have not given you permission to go through that 34-mile stretch, which they have absolute control over. Are, are um, the other end of the Persian Gulf away from them, uh, a commando sneaks in and attaches a limpet mine to, to a super tanker or something like that. Anything. And the super yeah, tanker goes anything. down and all of a sudden all the insurers go ape. Right. So we don't need to have a great big conflict. And if America thinks that it's going to do a preemptive attack on Iran without a response, we're talking about a military and a strategic and an intercontinental response from Russia and China. I know a lot of people think that Russia can back off. Russia can't back off from this. Putin, who is now a we call the quintessential uh, Russian nationalist, will completely lose power if he doesn't stand up to the West. Well, and, China. and we've already, they've already tried to attack him in more than one way. Right. Uh, and, I mean, you know, basically they, all they managed to do was step on the toes of well, a one actually, very powerful bear. Well, what they've done, too, is they actually bolstered Russian nationalism because they know that his opponent, who is a, who is a, a globalist, is uh, purely an example just like uh, uh, their... Finance minister was fired by Medvedev, uh, Kudrev, that they were actually trying to get the Russians to buy sovereign debt in Europe as part of the deal to get involved with the global world, world currency. The fact is that the Russians and Chinese are now making bilateral deals with Iran to have exchange with the ruble and the renminbi for Iranian oil. The Indians are getting out of giving the ruble, but are going to start selling gold. The fact is that the dollar is toast. Everybody should know this. And, they, and the reason why they're bringing down the dollar is they want the dollar melded into a G20 world currency with a gold backing once it's devalued, which I've stated these five steps before that God showed me supernaturally. Strait of Hormuz closed, technically or otherwise. U.S. dollar devalued. A gold-backed world currency based on the U.S. dollar with a G20. Then you'll have a wood, uh, basically a, an, a fixed exchange rate like the Bretton Woods program that was years ago stopped. And then a move toward an electronic funds transferred world currency where a portion of every transaction goes toward, quote, a carbon neutral currency so it funds world government. That's called the mark of the beast. And if people don't see this, and other people that are non Christians say, well, how do you know all this stuff? It says, because my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua HaMashiach, who came 2,000 years ago and is coming is again, God. is God. Not multiple gods out there, not the gods of late night comedy or the gods on with big blockbuster movies or the gods of theater. Or the God of money. Or the God of money. The real God, the God of everything, not like Nebuchadnezzar, whose name means the king of kings and fool of kings, who had to eat grass for seven years and then he came out of his insanity and had to say to Daniel, your God is God. Uh, there's a good uh, good uh, article that I linked to, uh, and I want to read three paragraphs out of it. U.S. military re uh, refuses to drive Bidenberg Israeli bus off cliff uh, into World War III. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let me, okay, here's three paragraphs, a little excerpt from that. 
The Israelis, oh, two paragraphs, I'm sorry. The Israelis know that Iran has sufficient guided missiles with fuel air explosives to destroy every Air Force, Marine, and Army base in the U.S. Central Command within minutes. They know that Iran has sufficient anti-ship missiles and supercavitating high-speed torpedoes to sink the entire Persian Gulf fleet in minutes. The Israelis know the flight time to Iran is so long uh, that the first 10,000 of those 150,000 incoming missiles would already begin the obliviation of Israel long before their 100 jets, actually it's more than that, but anyway, their 100 jets drop some bombs and return home. That's not a real plan. So what's the real plan? The only plan that makes military sense is to get the Iranians to destroy the U.S. Central Command and sink the U.S. Persian Gulf fleet while Israel launches a preemptive nuclear strike against Lebanon, Syria, and Iran. That way, the American military is permanently degraded uh, along with its economy. Then the United States would become an improvised vassal state for Israel, supplying their Zionist masters with mad dog killers willing to torture and commit war crimes. But if you think about it, that's the function America has already been fulfilling for some time in the eyes of Israel. Yeah. Well, Israel basically uh, is being totally abused. Uh, totally abusive I mean, to America, totally abusive to the world population, and they're going to basically set up the Israeli po population for annihilation. I mean, well, I, I, I made the comment uh, yesterday on my blog that the, the most abused uh, uh, people on earth probably are Jews, and they're abused by their own tribe because they, uh, this was in a, a, a comment about an article about uh, Bibi Netanyahu over, overplaying the Holocaust thing, and this was uh, and this, a major Israeli newspaper was saying this. Yeah, they're, they're, the yeah Israeli really newspaper they, saying they, this about Netanyahu. They, 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 they hit Jewish people all over the world with this Holocaust stuff, and you've got to support Israel, and there are people, etc., etc., but yet what they're doing is insane. And I mean, they're going, they're driving the country off a cliff, and many of their own people are, are, are doing everything they can to try to stop Netanyahu and his band of idiots from doing that. And yeah. and, uh, and and all the time, you know, the whole time this is going on, Netanyahu is waving this Holocaust flag, and he's about to create a, a something far worse than what happened to the Jews in World War II. He's about he's about to create a war that will destroy them. No, well, not only that, we're going to see all these other nations. You heard in the latest on Drudge that Egypt is banning Americans from even leaving Egypt now, and uh, you know well, you can't sense. Well, that's the son of uh, a U.S. cabinet member. Right. So, in fact, is that uh, these other nations are back in revolution. This, uh, Egypt is now revolting against the so-called army and the controllers, the same in Tunisia and Libya. The so-called Arab revolution that was started with Facebook and, and Twitter uh, started in, in, uh, in New York City and other centers where they want to uh, promulgate this so-called Arab Spring is going to backfire. And the fact well, I'll tell you what's going to backfire is when uh, Saudi Arabia and the Gulf uh, states, the, uh, the Arab monarchies, conservative Arab monarchies, go to war against Iran, against Lebanon, against Syria, and are killing other Muslims and other Arabs, and they're fighting on the side of Israel in the United States. Right. It's not going to take long for some of their Air Force pilots, and they may be colonels or they may be lieutenants, it's not going to take long for some of their ship commanders and some of their tank commanders to say, this is, we're going the wrong direction, boys. Yeah, exactly. And, and they're going to have a total nightmare within their own forces. And dollars to donuts, that will happen. Right. Well, in fact, there's 13 royal families and there's thousands of so-called children from these royal families that are involved. And they don't have total support in, in, uh, uh, in the Saudi government. People don't understand that the Saudi Air Force now poured in billions of dollars. They have a larger air force with more advanced and upgraded aircraft than the Israeli Air Force. But they're not invincible. And in fact, they're a clear target for an attack by uh, Iran. And the Iranian missiles can strike uh, Riyadh and other cities within Saudi Arabia, so they're uh, a, a and, very... And it depends on what they strike him with. I mean, uh, I don't believe this next war you're going to see very many dumb warheads, that is, this high explosive warheads. No. At the minimum, you're going to see fewer explosive warheads and submunition FAEs, submunition fewer explosive warheads. So an incoming uh, uh, IRBM uh, somewhere in flight, it can actually be shortly after takeoff, releases multiple canisters that settle down. Do you feel the ache? 
for a fact. Okay, we're back. Uh, Tim, I want you to repeat what you just said just before the break. And, of course, I was pulling up, and I want to post these articles about the uh, Aboriginal, uh, you know, 40th anniversary and the, and the, and the protest uh, during this uh, day with Julian Collard and her uh, other member of government that was taken out uh, with her, Tony uh, Abbott. I think that uh, as things begin to get worse, and, and you have a global depression going on, and they're lying, saying, oh, well, maybe we might be going into a double-dip recession. Oh, and, you know, uh, you can lie, and you can lie the big lie all you want, but uh, people, when you're talking about uh, how their lives are, they begin to... Uh, uh, you're not going to BS people and tell them that they're 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 living living the life of luxury and everything's wonderful when they can't even afford to hardly buy food. Okay, it right. doesn't it doesn't fly. It's too big a lie. Right. And uh, in this country, as we see, uh, they're basically they will try to steal the vote. Uh, and increasingly, it looks like they have in a couple yeah, of if they, if they, if, they if they kill hope, if they kill hope in this election, Absolutely. the population they are going to rise up over. And, and there will be a choice between idiot one and idiot two, and uh, it, the young people, and I, I teach at college, and I have to tell you, young people, are, and here's the story, 24 facts that show how ridiculously unfair our economy is for Americans under the age of 30. Right. For, for young people, uh, oh my God, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not good, and it's going to get worse. And uh, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? Right. Uh, you have to remember. Well, I know the light at the end of the tunnel. Lot of people, it, us going to the moon. That's history. That's like World War II is for me, and I'm 61. Right. Uh, the, the golden years of America are history to them. Let me read just a few of these. It's, it's unbelievable. Okay, number one, U.S. households led by someone 65 years of age or older are more than 47 times wealthier than U.S. households led by someone 35 years of age or younger. 47 times. Well, of course, the people that are over 65 grew up when things were, were booming. Today, only about 55% of all Americans between the ages of 16 and 29 have a job. Now, that's a job, not a full-time job necessarily, not a job that you can live off, just any job. That's flipping burgers at McDonald's is thrown in there. Okay. Back in the year 2000, <coughs> excuse me, more than 50% of all American teens had a job. This last summer, only 29.6% of all American teens had a job. And again, we're, we're talking about any job, part-time, what other. Since the year 2000, incomes for U.S. households led by someone between the ages of 25 and 34 have fallen by about 12% after you adjust for inflation. Wow. Now, um, it is absolutely ridiculous how much it costs to get a college education today. After adjusting for inflation, U.S. college students are borrowing about twice as much as they did a decade ago. And by the way, it's slavery. You cannot declare bankruptcy. The banksters set that up. And now the debt is more, uh, there's more debt in student loans than there is in credit cards. You know they're trying to consider passing that debt on to your children and grandchildren. And, that, that to debt, and they're actually discussing the idea of having debtors' prisons again. Again, just like the times uh, of uh, uh, you know, in Britain several hundred years ago, during the time of the Christmas Carol, the authorship of the Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. So, are there not enough workhouses? Are there not enough prisons? May actually be spoken again in the houses of of our Senate and Congress. They're talking about this openly now. Yeah, yeah. One, uh, but the the uh, student loan debt is now. Uh will surpass the $1 trillion mark sometime this year. Uh, the total amount of student loan debt in the United States now exceeds the total amount of credit card debt in the United States. That's unbelievable. And these kids are getting out and they can't get jobs. Hell, the jobs are in China and, and some other third world uh, delightful place. Well, the reason is what they do is they have the new model for uh, the current uh, what we call form of what I call rabbit capitalism is the Chinese People's Republican Army, where 80 million communist Chinese have all the money, and the rest are slaves that have basically no right to a, a property or security of a job or anything. Yeah. Uh, and they're in a matrix where U.S. and other international corporations that control Google, Yahoo, and the Internet are used as setting up their model systems in China that they want to import here with these laws like Obama passing this uh, Act, which he, you know, this ratifying this treaty, which he signed by himself without Senate or anybody else, 
Well, it's so not a treaty until the Senate ratifies it. Exactly. But the point is, Obama says yeah, I know, but Obama, the Constitution uh, Obama is, a, is a dictator. And he what we can have stand to, in front of a teleprompter and, and mouth off his nonsense, but he, he, he doesn't control the Constitution. Right. The point is that Obama, and when we hear also the comments by these crazy Israelis like this, uh, uh, this uh, Jewish Atlantic Journal uh, journalist that says that they should consider uh, a hit with American Mossad agents against, quote, the president, which means that Obama. That shows their absolute arrogance. Right. That shows and, their absolute arrogance, this little tiny country smaller in Rhode Island. Right. You know, I mean, I, I'm sorry they, they are going down a path of, of self-destruction. Well, you know the reason why they're going down? It's real simple. 2,000 years ago, the Pharisees and the Sadducees never accepted Jesus. And as a result, oh, with, the, with the Talmud of Babylon and their Sabbatean uh, philosophies uh, several centuries ago, with Shabtai Tzvi and Jakob Frank, they're now uh, the globalist so-called Jews, and they aren't Jews at all, because the real Jews, Torah Jews, are God's holy people. And the people of the book, the reason why Satan has got his particular regret marks on them, he doesn't want people to understand what kind of creature or being man is, and that we have a loving creator that not only takes care of us personally but our families and our nation and the fact is america has got this duality of being a both the daughter of of babylon and the daughter of god's kingdom which means a and true the more republic. we move towards babylon the worse things get right. and the, that's how it always and, works and that's i can tell you this is a thus saith the lord that the mark of the beast will come from america stamped by an american president and an american president whether it's this one or a future one when it finally happens will be the false prophet and of course it certainly looks like what's going on with the republican nominees that they're going to not allow ron paul to assume his position as president and if we get any of these other yahoos in there which are all globalists we're going to have uh, obama get a second term and he will terminate america and he will fir firmly confirm that he is the false prophet and he's going to bring in a globalist destruction of the state of america and a global empire where america is just another brand I, on the I wall fear you're correct let me go back to reading this before we're about to uh, go to commercial and then uh, uh uh, Chris will be on, and I, uh, we've got some really interesting stuff to talk Don't about. Don't worry, we have lots more. He's just going to be on for a few uh, minutes. Okay, the United States has more than 100,000 janitors that have college degree. One-third of all college graduates end up taking jobs that don't require college degrees, and that's assuming they get a job. Uh, right now, there are 5.9 million Americans between the ages of 25 and 34 living with their parents. Uh, at this point, there's uh, more than 3.5 million Americans behind their mortgage payments. The uh, total value of household estate uh, in the United States declined from $22.7 to $16.2 That's a heck of a decline. Wow. You know, uh, we're facing retirement crisis, unprecedented history. More than 10,000 baby booms are turning 65 every single day. Uh, Americans get arrested at a far higher rate than uh, older Americans do. Young Americans, 30% of all Americans get arrested by the time they reach the age of 23. I mean, what? You know, anyway, you go on and on and on. It's just uh, uh, the world that the young people are growing up in here in America is sad. Yeah. Amazing. Welcome back, and we have now, of course, uh, Chris uh, Harris. Chris, uh, we have an interesting story you sent me, uh, which is published on uh, Jan January 1st, 2012, about rapid increase in acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis in, in Japan. And I've got some very gross photos here. The uh, cases involving a virus called EV70 and CA24V, and the doctors uh, don't analyze the virus from the sample to diagnose, but at the judgment of the doctors that they, they are rapidly increasing, and you actually uh, show a graph of the peaks of the frequency of the viruses in Japan, the immune systems are being destroyed. And what's going on now is the, in, here in America, 
the average endocrinologist across America diagnosed one person per thyroid cancer per month. Now, since uh, Fukushima Daiichi, nine and a half months later, the average number of diagnosed cancer cases is two to three per week of the average endocrinologist that works with thyroid all the time. That's an enormous increase. Yes. Now, we're, we're seeing also radioactive cesium. Each one of these is what's called organ-seeking. The research on hamsters with cesium was that it rapidly increased the risk because of potassium is concentrated in breast tissue and in prostate tissue, glandular tissue, that any glandular tissue in your body will concentrate cesium, so it rapidly increased, particularly in women, breast cancer. It also uh, increased the risk of potassium uh, and magnesium in the brain, so you could increase rates of brain cancer. Radioiodine increased thyroid cancer, and radioactive uh, strontium will go directly to the bones. And of course, strontium is what's called a very powerful uh, beta emitter when it converts to yttrium. And uh, when it converts to yttrium, the uh, electron is so powerful that even if you have lead shields around the office or the building, it can actually hit the lead and actually generate x-rays, so it can generate such high-intensity x-ray, it's dangerous for you to have lead shield around somebody who has strontium poisoning. And the strontium ions, when they come out, even though they travel thousands of miles, are just as energetic and dangerous when they travel across the Pacific or go all the way to the Eastern Europe. So, uh, Chris, tell us the latest what's going on with these FOIA documents, because this story I'm going to post up as well as others, and I'm going to do a video blog after the show as well on our live stream channel for those who want to see all of these articles, including the uh, video about July or Gallard uh, being uh, whisked away <laughs> from protesters at this latest meeting today. Well, you know, a long, I guess a long while back, probably around April, so I was looking at some pictures that they could get uh, from Unit 3, which was the MOX reactor, and my team also was looking at it, and you say, you know, what, what is that golden thing over here? It's hard to see through the rubble, and the pictures weren't that clear. And I said, you know, suppose that that was the primary containment vessel dome or, or lid, I guess if you want to put it that way, but it's been bolted down by uh, hundreds of bolts, and it's, it's massive. And, uh, you know, suppose that this, this thing blew off, and it... Uh, is laying over on its side, on the side of the, the rubble that is now the uh, the rubble that is the reactor building, Unit 3. So we were looking at some of these uh, uh, responses to the FOIAs, and sure enough, they were actually talking about that way back on March 13th. We don't know, but it looks like the containment dome was actually blown up. That really wasn't discussed at all, and that changes the situation a lot. About right. it, it means an earthquake, now the tsunami destroyed it, is that right? Uh, it, it, could, it could mean that the explosion destroyed it, too. Yeah, exactly. The hydrogen explosion, right? Yeah, well, that, what happened is, firstly, what, what, the, what really what we're saying is that the earthquake was sufficient by itself to cause a hydrogen explosion because right. of the abnormal wet wall design of the hydrogen containment uh, system and that it didn't even need the tsunami for it to go critical. And that reactor yeah. number one, in fact, would have gone critical by itself just with the earthquake disrupting the wet well and destroying the hydrogen containment which caused the hydrogen explosion there and there was a big argument between the two groups of engineers I recall one saying that they should open up this hydrogen venting system the other saying no it's not properly designed because it was a faux engineering system that was made with the wrong kind of material so it couldn't withstand the high pressures well in, a, in an article today just uh, one, uh, 126 12 New safety standards post Fukushima could cost thirty million dollars, and this plant is specific to a BWR two. Remember, BWR twos weren't, weren't required to have the contain the hardened vent system because they were a little more robust and they could uh, pencil whip it away. But it looks like uh, one plant, particularly in, in the United States, is going to have to uh, heed the recommendations of the near term task force. Uh, we've been discussing that all along. They've been fine-tuning their uh, recommendations and putting in a hardened vent system on a BWR2, and one of them just happens to be the Columbia Generating Station out in Washington State. And we're, we're looking at something that's going to cost, well, they say $30 million. I was looking at where would you install this vent. The, the containment is totally different. It wouldn't have a convenient place to put it. I, I think that it would cost more, maybe double that, to, to, to design a system and to... Uh, and to actually install something and support it and maintain it, and all, I think it's going to cost a lot of money. And uh, so it's all around. We're going to look at BWR2s with a hardened vent system, the system that might have saved uh, Fukushima Unit uh, 1, 2, or N3. So uh, that, that's kind of a, a new development today. Um, yeah. Also... That 
Okay, I have to send you that article also. So that, that's how much it's going to cost to, to get up the standard and up the snuff. Um, other, other news items of the radiation emissions actually increased. That is, they went up. The operators we always, we always out of verbal... Average of 22 off. million becquerels per hour is the total that I've been yeah. shown from reports from Japan. 22 million. This is basically since December. We also had a drop last week to literally background almost into the low 30s. I checked today and it's back up again at uh, in high 50s to around 60, which means whatever happened is was a suppression of radiation is re-released. So the total radiation released now coming from Fukushima is actually increasing, not decreasing, and the amount of radioiodine and radioactive plutonium detected January 6th after the Moxie reactor, reactor 4 cooling pool broke, is now being detected as far away as Eastern Europe because all the other so-called Western countries are so corrupt, you can't get valid testing because the governments of Canada, the United States, and Western Europe will not test it and report it to the public. Yeah, and Dr. Bill, I linked an article from Washington's Bog a couple of days ago. Governments worldwide raise acceptable radiation levels based on politics, not science. Exactly. Well, that one too, Tim. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, unbelievable. I mean, you, you, <laughs> when you're dealing, some of these guys are so full of it. And all they know is lies, and they think when they go out and lie about something, somehow they, they make it all right or they, they affect it. But when you're talking about radiation, a politician can stand up in front of radiation and spew all the lies he wants, and he's just going to get irradiated. Lies don't stop anything. Yeah, and by the way, we're seeing weird currents all over the world, too. There's another report of an 18-foot great white shark spotted off San Diego Beach as well which is really unusual. There's current showing now bringing seals that are Arctic seals down off of uh, Portland and Seattle. Yeah, this I is saw not that, the black and white ones. Right, but we have an 18-foot, this is a report today, 18-foot great white off of San Diego uh, Beach. Not normal. Well, that'll cut, cut down on surfing. Uh, I would imagine. It would be like a <laughs> Jaws 4. How's that? <laughs> uh... <laughs> You know, uh, guys, uh, I've been I've been dealing in news for some time, and it just gets weirder and weirder. Well, I think that this year is the year when the globalists want to destroy hope. See, if we just had a minority of people to woke up and realize the only candidate that we need to elect is Ron Paul. He doesn't have perfect policies in terms of domestic, which we need to fix. Okay, but the fact is, even the late night comedians. Uh, they say that he's the only one rationally saying that we don't, we don't want to start this war. I mean, America must be war weary with, you know, since Gulf One war in the early 90s, and now Gulf Two and the Iraq war and the Afghanistan war. It's just getting so ridiculous. Now they want a Syrian and Iranian war, and the Iranians are not going to be uh, a pushover. It's the third in size of the United States. It has half the country as mountainous. It has advanced weapons and client states with Russia and China. It has anti-aircraft systems, the second most advanced in the world behind the S-400 around Moscow, the S-300. This is not going to be a walk in the park. And yes, we may win, but we will impoverish and destroy this country and lose many of our jets, our pilots, our weapons, and our aircraft carriers to the bottom of the Mediterranean and the Gulf of Aqaba. Well, Chris, you have an important story about the Friday the 13th uh, nuclear incident here in America. And, of course, one of the things that's a big story is that 25 nuclear reactors are planted under Obama's green policy, including his policy that's going to benefit Mr. George Soros and this new Natural Gas Act that he's trying to shove through as part of his green policies to quote, create jobs he put in his national address on Tuesday evening. Uh, tell us about this situation on Friday the 13th and the fact the plant is not back online properly operating. What happened? That was this month, Friday the 13th, right? Right. January 13th, 2012. Two weeks ago, approximately. Two weeks ago tomorrow. So what happened was this plant unexplicably lost power off-site. And actually, those are the kind of words that are in the report that I have to send you. For no reason at all, this thing just uh, poof, there was no power. Now, this plant has suffered a loss of off-site power in the past, but it was due to lightning strikes or some kind of weather. There was no weather. So at this point, um, uh, it, it says right here, the plant shut down after a main generator electrical breaker failed, followed by unexplained loss of power through the transformer, and then triggered some uh, loss of power out in the switchyard. Now, what made me look at this was that I wasn't getting any more information on it, and the days were ticking off. The plant's still offline today. I said, oh, simple breaker trip out. Those guys are good. They'll go out there and fix that. 
and they'll latch and snatch and, and, and make power again like they're supposed to do. Well, it's still not online again. And today, a special investigation team from the from the feds are going out there to help them figure out what went wrong with the plan. So, in, I, I was just trying to you know scratch my head and get any kind of information out of Chris, the are you saying we have a nuclear power plant that has been without outside power for two weeks? No. No, no, no. They, they've restored. Let, let me clarify that. All right, right now. All right, I have to say it. Thank you for bringing that up. They restored power within three hours to one side of it and a few hours later. But what made this plan a little, what is a little creepier was that one of the diesels had a, a ground alarm on it, which is, which is not, that's not a good thing. It means you're, uh, you're going to lose one of the two diesels that you have. And then they lost other mid too, as, as they're going. So it wasn't clean. It wasn't as clean as, as we said. And I didn't know about that until that was reported uh, two days ago. So it's been a while. It was kind of like a, they, were, they weren't giving out any kind of information. I wasn't able to get it. But finally, I got something from uh, nukepros.com, which is where the uh, operators, they post a lot of the, the articles and any updates they got. These are real, these are real operators. They're out there, and they're, they're, they, they keep their own website going. So... Um, and I'm, and I'm on that one, too. So what happened is uh, today, because of the multiple problems of this plan, the fact that they can't figure out what's going on with it yet, the NRC did send out a special investigation team or, uh, or augmented investigation team, the AIT. And uh, we're going to try to find out what happened. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a CME. I don't know if it was some kind of an attack on the uh, on the grid itself. But, you know, I'd be going... I'd be going kind of uh, sticking my neck out to say that kind of stuff, but then again, it is unusual. I don't say that much. So it's, it's now, the, 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 there's a, not just a firewall, there's no connection between the computers running the plant itself and the Internet. Howsoever, the grid is a different story, right? Yeah, we talked about grid vulnerability for a while now. You know, and so, so if you wanted to attack a plant... Plant, you would attack the grid, grid around the plant. Well, and that maybe is what happened. Well, be careful now. I don't. I don't want to give out any information. I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're right. I mean, that, the, the grid is vulnerable, and, and every every plant that's connected to it, every load that's connected to it, every every everything that you need is going to disappear if you remove the power from the grid somehow. And I don't know. I, I can't wait to see what what the report is. But I'm not going to see a report for 30 days. I mean, it's just. Or, you know, hopefully they find out what it is, but they can't start up again until, until they get a root cause, a smoking gun, because that's just the way we do things. And uh, I'm a little surprised that it hasn't been, uh, hasn't been uh, at least uh, uh, analyzed to the fullest extent yet, and at least come out with an apparent cause, if not a root cause. So that's just something I'm looking at. I hope it doesn't turn into anything, but right now it's, it's, the, the days are ticking off, and Wolf Creek should be making power, and it's not. You know, and uh, it's just another one that. But that's, uh, that's kind of, not none of this is is making. Uh, it's not on the radar screens of the media at all. Right. Well, I know that I've been digging. Yeah, I, I know that it's been very difficult to dig one. And uh, like I said, my partner over at Informal.com well, finally dug out some stuff. One of the stories I think we should talk about before we close down this uh, segment is uh, the Ron Paul media blackouts back on. And the fact is that there's a, a total media blackout. In fact, this article that I'm going to post up here is from the Atlantic Wire, and it talks about the fact that after a brief spike in interest, mainstream media coverage of GOP candidate Ron Paul is back near nothing. According to the Pew Research Center's Project for Excellence, uh, it's down to uh, less than 5% of all campaign stories focused on Paul, the lowest point since December 11th. And, of course, we now have these uh, tweedledee, tweedledum uh, kind of candidacy uh, debates, which are ridiculous. Uh, and it shows the stupidity also of the people. Unfortunately, the most uh, solidly quote, Christian state is South Carolina, but they voted for Ginrich, who doesn't have a positive testimony. Anybody who's a real Christian would know when somebody has a real testimony and when someone's a bold-faced liar and, and, and a malignant uh, you know, globalist that actually wants to take over this country and destroy it. So if Gidrich gets the nomination and he becomes president, God help us, because he's behind NAFTA, behind GATT, behind the North American Free Trade Agreement, behind uh, every kind of abomination that's been going on for decades, and he's a full force insider. And then we have Romney, who's a wannabe insider, who's very, very well funded, connected to the Mormon Church, and the Mormon Church at its highest levels is purely satanic. 
and people may be offended by that, that's tough. That's the reality. Just like the Sabbatean Jews that run Hollywood and run the banking system for the Vatican and the global Druids, they're satanic as well. Just like the globalist leaders that are Muslim that happen to be members of the Muslim Brotherhood, they're Masons and they're satanic also. Your comments, Tim. I just got back on and somehow or another we got we got dropped here, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always a little skeptical about just how much power the Jesuits have. Howsomever, I have a, uh, a family that lives about two blocks from me in a big mansion. I don't live in a mansion, but they do, and um, they uh, are cousins to the people that, uh, well, um, the, the guy that was the head, first head of the CIA uh, and his brother was the Secretary of State under Truman um, uh, Dulles. Right. Dulles Airport. Okay. Well, uh, they also have a cousin. He, he died about a year ago. He was a Jesuit uh, who was made a cardinal very late in life. Uh, he was a theologian, but uh, he just happened to be accidentally made a cardinal. And uh, uh, his close relative was the founder of the CIA, and another was uh, U.S. Secretary of State. Uh, the Jesuits do have a great deal of power. But uh, in terms of rank, yeah, pecking order, uh, they're still way down there. The real power lies with a very small group of global banking cartel families. That's where the money is. And always follow the money. Uh, it, you, you can't go wrong following the money. And they're the ones that've got it all. Yeah, well, uh, the actual, uh, we've gone through this before, that the chain of command goes from the bagmen, who happens to be the bankers, that go to the white and black pope, and to the uh, council of the druids that run earth. And that's why the title of the pope is not only the vicar of Christ, but also his representative on earth and emperor of earth. That's his actual title. So uh, I know having been raised a Roman Catholic, I know when I was a high altar boy that when the archbishop would have someone from visiting uh, from the Jesuits, he would be in a cold sweat. As any priest would tell you, if you ask him honestly, how frightened they were when the Jesuits visited them. I can, I've had Jesuit uh, uh, instructors and I are and people trained. I can always tell uh, when a guy has been trained by the Jesuits. Right. Um, it's just uh, it's hard to describe it. But you, uh, they've been trained in what's called the control of dialectics of the mind and how to control the uh, conversations, very much like the Delphi technique. And they strike fear into everybody's hearts because they don't know where they're coming from, even if they have the appearance of being very soft and very loving and very kind and, and concerned. You always know there's a, there's a, a multiple-level agenda going on. That's, that's yeah, the danger, well, and, and people don't the understand this. level of agenda going on right now is right. Satan trying to blow up the world. Exactly, and again, and that's why it's his a, stooges uh, cooperating. Uh, 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 and uh, you know, we we have hope. This this country could be not in a depression, but could be in the greatest boom period. Exactly, and by history. the way, it's not just one religious group. We have these so-called Christians in South Carolina that voted for a clear globalist. They're not paying attention. And hopefully the Tea Party will wake up and realize that Gingrich is not their salvation, that Romney is not their salvation, that Ron Paul is the only one that should be president with a proper group of people around him to get proper domestic policies. So the social safety net and the cost of health the only one that wants to end the Federal Reserve, and you will never solve our problems as long as the Federal Reserve is. Yeah, that's why Mayor Amschel Rothschild said, I care not what kind of government as long as he controls the money. Unless you dissect right. out the Federal Reserve, all other issues will not be solved. Amazing program today. Uh, thank you. Tim Alexander, you. Chris Harrison, our special guest. We'll get Dr. Pierre Pauli on next week from Italy and uh, from Switzerland. Back tomorrow with Fire.